Hi, I'm Loïc Le Carré, chief winemaker here at Saltani Vineyards. My passion for wine started back in Brittany, in France, where I'm from, in my dad's bottle shop. I started to discover wine and wanted to understand why all these wines taste so different, although they all come from grapes and sometimes they all come from one single variety. The only way for me to understand it was to become a winemaker. I worked in France, in Bordeaux for multiple years and then came to Australia. Taltani provided me with an opportunity which I couldn't have in France. The opportunity of growing amazing Shiraz, fantastic Cabernets and elegant sparkling wines from one single vineyard. Which means that Taltani can provide any wine for any key moment in life. We have decided to put a tribute video together for you to celebrate your life and times at Teltani from 2001 to 2012. We hope you enjoy it. Okay, so we're going to creep into the house, Adam and I will, and then when we get in there, Richard will be presumably still asleep from last night, so Adam can then grab the cake tins and just smash them over his head. I think that's a good start anyway. A nice professional start for us. Okay, stand by. We're here at Loic's old house. He lived in this place for just over, well, most of his time at Tautani and just bring back some fond memories. One of those memories of nights that we've had here with our fearless leader, Richard Kingman, sales marketing. Let's go inside and have a chat with Richard and see what sort of state that he's in from last night. There's some few suspicious clues laying around that we still know that he's here. If you'd just like to come this way. Evidence of Richard Kingman being around is that one of his uh, feats during the middle of the night is always getting up to cook. And as we can see, 3 o'clock, this looks reasonably fresh. It's 8.30 now. Richard has performed another one of those... Uh, Amazing uh, midnight snacks. So let's go see where he is. I think we found him. Get that camera over here. Some of, just a real quick summary of Loic coming into the business. I, I haven't, I've worked with Loic for um, just uh, on seven years now. And, um, you know, a bit of history about Loic coming into Tautani. He came over here in 2001 as a seller hand. And uh, he, he did a harvest here, then he left. And then he was offered a position to come back full time, which he accepted. And he worked in the cellar, um, combination of roles, basically assistant winemaker, uh, progressed to winemaker. I came into the business in 2005 and I'll never forget going into the lab. We had, had three, make, three winemakers at that time. It became very obvious to me who were making all the blending decisions and, and being more engaged in the actual winemaking process. Um, I made a decision to, uh, to promote Loic to senior winemaker and he's never really looked back. Um, from that role he just progressed more and more and more. We gave him the opportunity and he, he's uh, He's taken this, this business to a new level as we had to adapt to the market with making more sparkling. Uh, he found ways to source fruit. He became a grower liaison. Uh, he negotiated a lot of, uh, lot of contract, grape contracts. 2009, um, with the, um, <clears throat> the creation of Gillette Wine Estates, uh, which is the parent company, Loic was promoted to Chief Operating Officer, so taking in um, the role of uh, Chief Winemaker, as he was, with uh, vineyard production responsibilities. So that's his current role and he's really been able to consolidate our business and put, a, put forward, a, I suppose, a, a business plan that's going to be, uh, you know, the next four or five years, a, um, a, a platform for us to build upon further successes, which Loic is really responsible for creating. And one of the highlights, I think, is him um, bringing into the, our portfolio uh, a Sauvignon Blanc which <clears throat> was so different to all the other Sauvignon Blancs that are on the market. I mean, as you know, New Zealand was 
really or has and still is dominating the uh, that category. And, and Loic wanted to do something because we've got a lot of Sauvignon Blanc here, but um, he thought he wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, and what he did with that wine, um, you know, adding only I think thirty percent something like that into into uh, French oak, um, bringing a little bit of fruit from Taz Tassie, um, some fruit here from the uh, the Pyrenees, and crafting a wine which is um, so delicate but complex and I tried with him the other night the 2011 and he's really proud of that um, it's just absolutely stunning wine and uh, and he should be proud of it and he's always said that out of all the wines that he's made at Tautani um, the Fumé Blanc is uh, one of the hardest wines that he actually makes yeah. oh, that, well, as you've just seen all around here now this is uh, one of Loic's personal achievements putting all this together. If you've ever seen our old disgorging line that's been here for about 25 years, uh, it was looking pre pretty archaic. Uh, I think it was a bold move by Taltani to put this in a few years ago and Loic had a major input into its design, uh, sourcing the parts, mainly mainly this uh, this piece of equipment here that does all the, all the, uh, the, the gritty work. Okay, Dean, I've got to ask, what is the deal with the facial hair? Facial hair, look, um, big change. But recently, had some drinks with uh, Richard, as you know, up at the winery. Yep. And she had, I reckon, 30 or 40 drinks with Richard at the winery. <laughs> Still getting over that, mate. And um, anyway, I reckon by about the 30th drink, you know, Richard's in my ear and he's going at me and he's going, he says, Dean, he says, you, you take your job too seriously, you know, you need to learn to relax. And I said, what do you mean? And then he comes out and he goes, you should be more like Loic. I said, more like Loic? He said, yeah, cool, calm, collected. For fuck's sake! Level headed. Bugger! Bugger! Shit, you're right. I thought, uh, I really do need to change, don't I? So, anyway, I went away with it and thought for a while, how the hell am I going to be like Loic? Fuck! Fuck! So, I um, went home, started the fuzz, found this fantastic photo of Loic, and there it is in the front of my presenter. So I thought, every time now, Loic, I go out and see my first customer, there you are, before I even get out of the car, have a good hard look at you, and think, how am I going to be more like Loic with Day? The other thing I've been decided to do, mate, was before I even go and see anyone, a quick nip, a bit of cognac, no one has to see it in the car, back in the pocket, and in I go. And, mate, it has made such a difference. I mean, I used to always go in and see my clients with a deal cruncher. <laughs> I don't have to do that anymore, mate. I'm more relaxed. So thank you. And Richard, thanks for that, mate. Well, Loic, what a surprise, I must say. You know, uh, time spent together here, having you and Simon in, in the Pyrenees with us has just been, uh, you know, it's been beautiful for me. It's been certainly beautiful for my, for my family. You're, you're virtually uh, godparents to our children, as, as you know, and they, they love and adore you both like uh, you, you wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't believe. Mate, um, you know, what can, what can we say? You're going to be really, really sadly missed. There's a few things, though, mate, that I'd like to say. You know, uh, probably your winemaking skills. You know, compared to what we're doing at Summerfield, probably lacking a little bit, I'd say. But, you know, I, I suppose uh, if you get the opportunity to go somewhere else, you know, you might be able to sharpen those up a little bit. Oh, entertaining memories of Loic. Well, there's quite a few, and I'm going to focus on the sports ones because because uh, they are the best. Um, Loic, as uh, many of you would all know, is is a fantastic sports fan. I think he watches every single sport known to man. He loves it. Uh, but when it comes to doing it, hmm, yeah, not, not quite as uh, not quite as good. Of course, we didn't know this in the early days when I first came to Blue Pyrenees and uh, Loic was early at Tautani. Uh, one of the things we did was reinvent the uh, Chateau Remy Tautani annual cricket game. Uh, we found a trophy in our cupboard and so we thought we'd, um, we'd ask Tautani if they wanted to resume that. Great, they did. So uh, uh, we organised the day in January to restart this fabulous trophy and uh, um, we assembled on the park and Loic turns up with his most outrageous bright clothing and these fluoro yellow and orange shoes um, which we all know only super cocky confident sports people wear that sort of gear and so uh, our team was in fear of uh, who is this guy and he actually looks like 
this famous tennis player called Andy Roddy. And um, so we're pretty sure this guy's a gun sportsman. We thought they'd recruited some some really, really gun sportsmen from somewhere to uh, to make sure they win this trophy. Well, as it turns out, uh, looks can be deceiving and Loic uh, wasn't the gun cricketer that uh, we, we feared he might be. He, uh, he in fact, had no idea. <laughs> And um, he actually helped us um, helped us win back the uh, the Shadow Remy Tautani Cup quite a few times. So uh, thank you, Loic. And here's that trophy, just in case you forgot about it. We've uh, we've um, got it in our keep again. And uh, I think since we reinvented the game, um, Blue Pyrenees has won four out of six. And thanks for your help on that, Loic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tautani. Uh, I'm not sure Loic played that game. And then uh, this is where Loic came in and got the got the trophy back for Blue Pyrenees. Thanks, Loic. 2007, 2008, 2009. Yeah, I actually came across something very funny when we um, upgraded the asset register, and we had to look at. And I came across this little sheet there, that's of the contents of his house, what's in there, what is the wineries, and what is his. So very interesting. It is more about the unique English that he actually has. So one of the things that he is actually listed on here is water boiler. So it was a long time. We were trying to figure out what that is and then at a later stage we actually realized it translates to kettle. <laughs> and then the other interesting thing is, is he listed um, half of the cups are Teltani's the newest and fancy ones are Loic's. I have to mention this one, sorry Loic, but last year we decided to uh, enter a regional touch rugby side in, um, thanks to Rosemary for organising that one, and and um, Loic and I were the, the only two guys who went down to Ballarat and actually trained to learn how to play this game, because none of us knew, we are all beginners. So Loic and I did a training session in Ballarat, and then we did another one in Avoca, and so we were the two key guys, we were the two organisers of the team, uh, the other guys really didn't know much about it, so we had to explain the rules and the game and, and, and call the plays. Well, uh, this was this was a great plan. So we're out there, the first game, we had to play three games for the day, and first game we assembled and uh, we started throwing the ball around, and uh, I thought, well, I'll invoke one of these plays that Loic and I learned. So um, I've grabbed the ball, we headed diagonally across the pack, everyone wondered what I was doing, and I called out crossover, which was one of the plays we we learned. And that meant Loic should have been running behind me in the opposite direction and I just had to flick the ball over my shoulder and he was through the gap. So I flicked the ball over my shoulder, turn around and there's the ball lying on the ground. Loic's nowhere to be seen. I look around the sidelines and he's hobbling off holding his groin. <laughs> 30 seconds into the game, the first game, he's ripped his groin, no good for the rest of the day. So uh, Loic, the, the sports memories are definitely the, uh, the uh, most entertaining ones and uh, I'll miss them for sure. <laughs> I was um, quite surprised to find my first vintage. That So I started and did a vintage at Tartani and then did a vintage down at Clover Hill. I, I was quite surprised to find that our illustrious chief winemaker had actually graffitied the winery when he was a vintage intern in 2001, thinking he was never going to set foot there again. So I ducked behind tank five one day to turn the cooling on and found Loic's little autograph on the wall with the vintage that he worked there. In 2012 was uh, Blue Pyrenees, so that's why it's here. <laughs> <laughs> One of the main things I remember about Loic, um, I think it was last last year we were we were taraging and, and Loic does start up for us and um, he he hates mornings. He's I think he's well he's an evening man, but uh, he's stupid enough when he's uh, tired let alone at five in the morning when we're trying to do start-up for Taraj. Anyway, um, I think he actually knocked himself out on the on the bottling line <laughs> when he was testing. As a Frenchman does, they always run in and he was trying to do the, the swab test and Loic's very active in that way and he ran in and I don't know how you can do it because to get the mark he had a big dot in his head, I thought, you know, I thought he might have done some more damage but he you have to run at the machine to get it damaged like that. So he was in there and he must have just stood up and just cracked his head. And anyway, a lot of blood around the lab when he came in to do the analysis. He smashed up half my glassware. And uh, when I got in there, he, he was full of excuses. But anyway, it was, um, it was pretty funny because Loke very rarely does anything wrong. So if you're there, you've got to laugh at him. Or with him, sorry. <laughs> okay, 
Luik has strategically reversed the Kluger in, so nobody is aware of the fact that after his resignation was announced yesterday, he decided to leave with a bang. Uh, I just thought something else actually about uh, Loic when when he first came here. Uh, something I always really wanted to do was to learn French, and I thought, wow, a French fellow would be able to teach me the language. Uh, I've since learned that Loic would make a crap teacher because he takes the pace out of the slightest little mistake. Have a un copa. He was instrumental um, with changing our business to become one of the leading uh, sparkling wine companies in Australia and I suppose <coughs> the one thing that he contributed mostly to that other the than on the E <laughs> the accent on the E that was all lowing it was all lowing is it an agrave accent or the other accent I think it's grave I think so too yeah it was a master stroke by like getting the uh, accent on the end of the tasho the two dots and the yeah. So that's six things. <laughs> six. Uh, I, how have I heard people? I heard someone ask me if it was Hungarian once. Oh so my God. They, they did a big Loic Le Calvez. <laughs> Loic Le Calvez. Well, Loic Le Calvez. That's how I would say it, but I don't know if that is correct. Uh, Loic Le Calvez. No, I, I actually did try and pronounce it the best way. I, I try and copy um, Simon, and which is just Loic, I think. Loic Le Calvé. <laughs> Loic Le Calvé. 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 What is this? No, I is there a Z at the end of Le Calvé? Yeah, there is. So it looks, it is, lo, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to have to say it again. It's like Le Calvé. Like Lee Calvés. Calvés, something like that. Goodbye, Le Calvés. Like Le Calvé, how I'd pronounce it, but I don't think that's right. <laughs> Loic Le Calvé. Loic Le Calvé. Close? I don't know. Well, I'll give you the ofi official way to say uh, Loic's name. It's Loic Le Calvé. I probably should only say nice things, but I will say the one thing that I won't miss about Loic is his choice of music for the cellar. Because he came down to help me at Clover Hill in the 2011 vintage, uh, when I had Eloise working with me as well. So she ha he had access to her iPod, and my goodness, the amount of French hip-hop that man could play, and it just went all day for 14 hours. The thing I really think I'm going to miss about Loic is... Um Oh, hang on a minute, hang on, hang on. I was glad for the help, but uh, next time if you come and help me, Loic, I get to choose some music. <laughs> I won't miss trying to find ways to uh, <coughs> deselect you in the cricket team every year, Loic. <laughs> I won't miss those disgusting sneakers that you decide to wear. I say Loic also uh, taught me was a bit of uh, French lavender in the right. car, just to calm me down a bit more before I go anywhere. Oh, right, excellent! So. It's obviously working well. I That's tell you really what. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Let's go. Well, we will miss your your uh, your happy nature and and, uh, and your fantastic personality. But uh, sporting wise, um, stick to wine making, mate. Here, one of um, Luke's original paintings, which he's obviously proud of. And I suddenly realised that all over that painting it just says we, 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 everywhere. So only a Frenchman or little pigs going home from the market yeah, would have that. So um, he's obviously found um, somehow 
by Aboriginal painting that's really French, not Australian. It's always been cool too, I guess we do have a shared geeky love of Lego as well, <laughs> so it's something we have been known to have love and chat about it. Well, Eric, I think we know why you really resigned. <laughs> C'est pas ce que tu crois, elles sont toutes Les tasses play, ouais des tasses, ouais des tasses play Sous tous les aspects, elles sont toutes des tasses play Les tasses play, ouais des tasses, ouais des tasses play Sous tous les aspects, elles sont toutes des tasses Des tasses play Of course, uh, we, you know, we are taking the piss a bit here, Loic, but um, I've absolutely uh, treasured our time together in the Pyrenees, and, and uh, as a colleague, um, you, you couldn't offer any more. You're always there when I had a question, so um, I really miss you. I hope, uh, I hope everything works out with Simon, and, uh, you know, I think it's a really brave decision doing what you're doing, and good luck. I'm absolutely sure you'll pop up in the wine industry somewhere, somewhere uh, in the future uh, with your skills that you've learned. It's not just wine making anymore. Like me, we've been through many aspects of wine business, so you're uh, multi-talented, very capable. I'm sure you'll pop up somewhere and I look forward to seeing you then. No, Lokes, um, he's been a good friend to bounce ideas off since I've, since I've turned up and I've only known him for well, three and a half years, but uh, we've become... Uh, friends and, and he's uh, a role model as far as uh, the way he behaves um, in the public arenas and as well as how he's uh, how you've coped um, and worked with adversity and um, uh, I wish you all the best and I hope um, hope everything goes well mate and uh, you know you're, you're a good bloke and I hope to keep in touch so all the best. As I said to you last night, mate, you and Simon have a life membership at Summerfield. You'll never have to pay for accommodation. You can always come and stay yourself and your family and so on. Uh, mate, we, we love you more than, more than we can all say here. Mate, we'll catch up soon. Love you guys heaps. Look after yourself. No, seriously, uh, I think I will miss that uh, with all that banter with Lowick, the English-French. Uh, a rivalry that we've had, and it's always been in good fun sort of thing, and uh, uh, definitely miss that. Uh, I think our time here, I've known like, like a long time, I've been here as long as him. Uh, we were brought together by Taltani Vineyards, and we've sort of grown together, and that friendship's grown out of that. I'm going to miss that when he's gone, but I do hope that that, that does, uh, that does con continue through when you've gone, and I'm sure it will do. Got to keep in touch with Loic and his gorgeous wife Simon. Fully understand his reasons for leaving. Uh, uh, you know to be to be with Simon, and I can only wish wish him all the best for the future and uh, for Simon's speedy recovery. Uh, it's probably a hundred and one things I could say, but uh, yeah, just wish you both very well. Bye, Loic. Good luck for the future. It's been great working with you. Take it easy, mate. Well, I think there are essentially four qualities that can describe Lake. It's uh, fair, uh, patient, intelligent, and uh, well, it's, and uh, and a very nice man all, all around. You know, it's, uh, I'm sure it will be missed. I'm sure I'm not the first one, the last one to say that. And uh, anyway, so good luck to him. It's been a great um, experience working with you, Loic. Um, you know, as a, as a friend. And uh, a winemaker. Um, then many trips up and down them rows, tasting them them berries. Um, I've learned a lot from you, and um, it's been a great pleasure working with you. And I wish you all the best in the future for yourself and Simone. And um, that's from the vineyard team as well. I'd like to uh, wish you everything. Uh, best of the future. Loic, um, mate, you're going to be uh, missed. All work aside, you've, you've become, you know, a very close friend of mine, and uh, you know we were, we were neighbours for five years, and uh, we helped, our, we supported each other through thick and thin. 
Uh, you helped me through some pretty tough times and you know what you've gone through in the last last few years you've just given me inspiration about what really matters in life um, and that is family you've, you've taught me that more than anyone else and your dedication to what's happened over the last few years is just incredible um, behind every great man there's a great woman and Simon your your battle has been really heartfelt and um, we've We've sort of gone through the journey with you as well. Um, you've always supported Loic throughout his career and it's time that you deserve Loic to be with you by your side and um, we just wish you all the very best with your recovery and uh, you know that we're all behind you. Um, it's just emotional. Yeah, uh, so just, just, Loic and Simon, you are, you are always welcome back to Tautani. Please consider this as your second family. We, uh, we, we, we love you immensely. You're going to be sorely missed. Um, and we know that you're going to be lifelong ambassadors for Tautani. And uh, we just wish you all the very best on your next journey in life. And uh, please stay in contact. That's it. Just for those who thought that they want to join me with Lloyd's uh, going away in the house, just want to show the latest addition to my cutting tools. And just to make sure that I know exactly what to do, basic butchering of livestock and game. So they have to decide on which category they fall. <laughs>